Throughout history, there has been a complex debate over education. The origins of teaching can be found as early as 551 BC with the birth of Confucius, who was one of the first private teachers. Many ancient civilizations knew the importance of education and tried to implement it. The Greeks utilized private tutors to teach their children, while the Romans used educated foreign slaves to instruct their youth. The increased amount of education benefited Christianity by allowing multiple people to read the Bible and spread its message. In the Middle Ages, education was not as valuable. The Roman Catholic Church began to educate the sons of nobility in monasteries, which eventually became universities. The peasant class was neglected in education because of the need of workers due to advancements in agriculture and industry. The Protestant Reformation began, and many of its leaders, such as Martin Luther and John Calvin, promoted public education as a Christian duty. Protestant Europeans brought this idea to America in their pursuit of a better life. One such group were the Puritans, who created the first public school in 1635. The Puritans believed that education had many benefits and protected souls from Satan. Public schools became standardized at the recommendations of Horace Mann, who urged the implementation of a Prussian form of education. The end of the 19th century saw the creation of the Progressive Movement, which emphasized the importance of educational reform. The Progressive Movement was led by Theodore Roosevelt. Because of this movement, compulsory education was put into public schools. Recently, the federal government passed the No Child Left Behind policy in order to bring educational reform. I strongly believe that uh, we, we want to make sure the No Child Left Behind Act continues to work. It's a, you, you measure every day. That's why you're successful business people. I mean, you know what your business is doing. I believe we ought to extend that same principle to our public schools and ask a simple question. Can a child read at grade level? And in order to determine that, that's, that's why you measure. And if the answer is yes, we all say, great. If the answer is no, the answer the question, I'll be, then what are you gonna do about it? And so the principle behind the No Child Left Behind Act is to set high standards, believe every child can learn, and measure to see if we're getting results. And Congress need not weaken such a good piece of legislation. There is no doubt that the federal government will continue to pass educational reform policies in the future. A specific field of education is social studies. This can include history, geography, and political science. Social studies allows people to better understand the government of the United States and its history. Many social studies educators, as well as aspiring social studies teachers, understand its importance. Well, history is a, a good way of showing people where we came from and how we got to where we're at. It's an interesting uh, thing, especially working with social studies students. You know, social studies isn't just, it, it's social studies, it's not history. You can survive without knowing what year something happened and all the individual people that impacted it, although there are some greats that, that are important. But this is about being an active citizen in our democracy. And that's what social studies is. It's not just history. It involves psychology, social, sociology, civics, geography. And Educating young people and allowing them to see uh, how far we've come. And social studies helps to ensure that no history will ever be forgotten.